The following podcast is a Next Level production. Hi. I'm Luther. Okay. None of you belong here. Oh, well then. I guess we'll just pack our bags and move out. (laughs) You slay me, Chris. (laughs) I wasn't expecting company. This is the best I could do on short... Short... Short notice. Mom. Mom, she's a robot, you perv. She's not a robot. Hey, don't you call him that. Or what? Well, when you come closer and find Luther. out. You think I'm afraid Guys, chill. Stand, Stand down, man. Luther. She's got a voice. How about I hide that big Rubik's Cube up your ass? Hey, panelists, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this is going to be a spoiler-full podcast about Umbrella Academy Season 3, Episode 1, Meet the Family. And the synopsis is, Steve? The siblings get to know some more of the 43 children in an alternate timeline. That's an interesting, because I have some notes on this that uh, when we get into our discussion, I'm going to talk about. That's an interesting synopsis. It's kind of correct, but uh, when I get into my notes, I will uh, reveal what I discovered upon doing a little bit of research. Ah, okay, cool. So with that, we should move right into initial thoughts. So your I, thoughts? It was it was good. Um, I watched it. it. I had a weird timeline with watching this because because listeners, if, if you're if you're not aware, uh, Mark and I have both watched the entire season. So we're coming at this rewatch, even though we're going to do one episode a week. We're still. We're going to take at it from the perspective of having seen the whole thing. So I watched episode one like on a Thursday, and then I followed up and watched episodes two through ten over the next weekend. So I had a little bit of a disconnect between hmm. episode one and in episode uh, episodes two through ten. And I'll get into some more specific things later. Um, but it was interesting. I, the the one thing that did jump out at me is we didn't get a previously on any kind of previously on. No, uh, no, we didn't. I thought not. was I thought that was interesting. I don't know why they would do that. Maybe just because it's kind of restarting. But at the same time, and again, I'll go into this later. There is a character that gives us basically a previously on throughout the episode, and I'll get into that when we get my notes. Ah, cool. With me, I I really enjoyed it. Yes, it was like my second viewing of the first episode. I didn't do a third, but overall, I was like, okay, I was able to catch a couple of things that I didn't catch before on upon first viewing, mm-hmm. which, you know, kind of made you think, oh, and a light bulb clicked in and going, light bulb. Yeah. I see it. Okay, there's that. And in two occasions, actually, but it honestly, it was done very well. We jump right in with the kids as they come in and they meet the Sparrow Academy. So obviously we get what we wanted where we got a face off within this particular uh, episode. And I really enjoyed that. And it leads on to more that we're going to just learn as we go. Mm hmm. And I, I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And honestly, it was very entertaining, too, because they put a little bit more levity in it. Yeah. Which, in, in comparison to the previous two seasons, especially within the first episode. But it has its dark undertones, which I really do enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th- those are my thoughts. I Overall, I enjoyed it, and I had a good time watching it again. And Yeah. It, it, I might just go back into it, because before I did my initial watch of everything for the particular season... It was literally, it's like, oh, let me jump back into the previous season so that way I could catch up and Mm -hmm. see how it relates and goes into it and flows. And it did flow. Yeah, I didn't I didn't go back and rewatch. I I wanted to. I started I think I started that last episode of season two, but never really finished it at all. So I I was it was like I said, it's it's kind of interesting that there's a a character that gives us some previously on moments uh, that I think was kind of cool, kind of a cool way to do it. And we didn't really (laughs) like I said before, we didn't really need a previously on because it's basically restarting the whole thing, even though there's some changes. And again, that's something that uh, when we start talking more about this, that uh, I want to get deeper into. Sure. And with that, we'll move right along right into our highlights or our favorite highlights of the episode itself. Well, the first one for me that I, that I want to talk about, can I go first? Is it? 
Yeah, and, good. Okay. The, the first one, you've already started kind of talking about it is that dance party. And what I realized on my second viewing or really more specifically on my third watch, mm-hmm. I realized that dance party is all in Diego's head. Ah. This is, this is Jamie's power. She spits that stuff at him and it makes them fall into some kind of a trance or, or hallucinate. And if you notice in the scene, she blows, she spits that stuff at him. He, it hits his cheek. She blows a kiss to him. Yes. And then, and then the camera kind of does that thing where it goes into somebody's through into their eyes kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. And we go into his brain and that's when we hear the line about, uh, about the old fashioned way. And then they start the dance off and he's all confused. Like, <laughs> what are you, what are you doing? You know, and, and all this. And, and, uh, and then when it cuts back to, and he kind of shakes his head out of it, it cuts back to that same exact line. And then they start actually fighting and we get a whole different song that uh, I didn't look up. I'm hoping you might know some of the, the songs that were used in here, but we get a t- completely different song when the no. actual fight starts. No, no. The only one I don't remember is Footloose. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, and then she does the same thing to five up on the balcony. When five says he'll take care of it, he, she spits that stuff at him. Yeah. And the next thing you know, he's hallucinating his mannequin coming to life. Yeah. And he's kissing the air, you know, and she walks by him and calls him a pervert, which I don't know if she was just calling him a pervert because he was kissing the air and Diego was talking about the robot as their mom or mm. if she can actually like control the hallucinations. I don't know, but I, I don't I, think she was, can. I think it's just meant to go inside their mm-hmm. most desire. Maybe that's what it is. And it just, it, it but it just was funny to me that it took me, I, I think it really was the third watch where I fully grasped that concept that that dance party was all mm-hmm. in his head. And that's why in later episodes, we're going to see him kind of put a block thing up when she tries to spit that stuff at him or at somebody else. But she does have some sweet fighting skills because we see her beat up those guys in the, the pizza parlor pretty handily. So she's, oh, yeah. she's definitely got some skills. Well, they've been trained well by Harkreeves mm-hmm. himself, or if not been visually stimulated to learn moves like that. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I you know, I, don't, I can't see Hargreaves saying, here, do it this way. No, you're an old man. You're going to die. Yeah. yeah no, <laughs> they, I'm sure they got good training. They got, they got great training. Yeah. One for me would be the whole soul subway ride and the glitter... And the girl getting pregnant, you know, you mm. saw this little kind of glitter bomb and everything, and you could see that something envelops her, goes into her body, and then she starts ballooning up. Mm-hmm. And then we see Hargreaves taking the child away, which leads us basically to the Sparrow Academy, kind of like a, not previously on, but at least a little history of how the Sparrow Company or Sparrow Academy came into effect yeah and this is uh one of my other moments uh that i'll go that i can go right into because that started out seoul in seoul korea um october 1st 1989 um mm-hmm. so i it's kind of interesting too again we're talking about this whole season we kind of bookend the season with ben because that's obviously that's ben's birth correct in the subway train and in the very end of the last episode that post credit scene we have ben riding a subway train reading a book Mm -hmm. And so we kind of bookend with Ben, but it also leads me right into one of my points, which is when I listened to the voiceover narration during that whole subway scene, something stood out that was wrong to me that I didn't, that didn't sound right. So I went back and I rewatched the very beginning of season one, episode one, and I realized what the difference was in season one, episode one, it's 43 women that give birth on that day and Hargreaves gets seven of them. Uh-huh. In this timeline, the narrator says 16 babies were born yeah. and Hargreaves got seven of them. Mm-hmm. And so there's some line I vaguely remember. And this is, again, will be part of why we're, good, we're doing a rewatch of this is there's some line later on in the season where mm-hmm. somebody talks about 27 other mothers. But I don't remember specifically what that was all about. So I really caught that. Thought that was interesting that in this timeline. Like I said, the narrator only says 16 babies, not the full 43. And that's Mm -hmm. why I was kind of surprised about the synopsis saying 43 Mm -hmm. children, because that's not quite accurate. Yeah, it's not accurate Um, completely. And so I hope that's something that they kind of explain in the next season. Hopefully we're getting, I don't, has there been an official announcement about a season four? Not 
as I don't yet. think so. Yeah. yeah. So hopefully we'll get a season four. But that was that was a little confusing to me. And like I said, I had to go back and rewatch the the very beginning of. But I did love the again. And you bring that scene up. I just really love that scene with. And I'm assuming it's Ben's grandmother when Hargreaves is trying to get the child, and she's like, "I'll cut you in half." And Hargreaves is like, "Excellent." I love a spirited negotiator. <laughs> yep. You know? Yeah. That was a good line <laughs> I too. It. I thought that was great. So, uh, so yeah, so that was my second one was, uh, the 43 down to 16. And, and what about those other 27? Hmm. One for me. Well, definitely that fight scene between umbrella and sparrows, mm-hmm. it, it, something that I think we've been looking forward to for the past two years, but this was so funny to watch because, you know, the one thing that I got to chuckle out of was, uh, Diego against the box. Yeah. <laughs> Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was great. Uh, Vanya versus that one girl that has the powers that are offensive to deflect her abilities. And I love how she just re- retorts, oh, art snob mm-hmm. huh <laughs> and just like gets in there and uh marcus against uh w- one of luther. course luther, luther yeah. yeah and uh two against klaus was that ben was that, I'm, yeah, ben kind of got into it with klaus a little bit and then klaus basically ran away i, I think ben is is considered the number two i don't remember what our sparrows numbers all were except for luther being one and vanya being seven I don't remember all of our other numbers, and I don't specifically remember the Sparrows numbers, except for, like you said, it, I think it was the same thing. Marco was number one. Mm-hmm. Ben was number two. I think Jamie was number four. And then, of course, and we have the... Re- yeah, we it, have it's the, kind of confusing after yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> because we have replacements for other... Because we have Alphonse, Sloan, Christopher, and then... I'm forgetting somebody. There were seven of them. Ben, I guess the other Ben. So it's, it's yeah, Marcus, Ben, Sloan, Jamie... Christopher, hmm. huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Faye, the the Raven, the Raven girl, Raven girl. Yeah, yes. Faye, Faye. So, yeah. so she's the other one. I don't remember exactly what number she was in, but you know, Jamie and Alphonse were together in that pizza parlor, and Alphonse is the one where if you punch him, you feel the pain of what you inflicted on him. That's what happens with Allison is fighting him, huh. you know. And then uh, you talked about Vanya with the grab with Sloan, who was Gravity Girl, where she was lifting her up and yeah. moving her around and stuff. So, yeah, it was it was really a, a cool fight scene. I loved, uh, you know, that's another one of those mo- those Diego moments where he says, "We got to get out of here because you know we're getting our asses kicked or we're getting we're getting our butts kicked." And and Diego says, "Well, you know, I was I was doing fine, but I'm worried about you guys." You know, Diego's having <laughs> that same thing. So, but I thought that was I thought that was great because you know it's another one of my little just a little note. We've yeah. not seen uh, the sparrows lose. We've not really seen the, the, the sparrows, the Umbrella Academy lose. And that really, really plagues Luther later. And I've got his quotes from uh, yeah. from that losing uh, later on. So uh, yeah, it really does damage to Luther. Yeah, you're right. It it does. Yeah, it does. The next one I've got is uh, I call this my blink and I missed them moments from because <laughs> I because I had a separation from the first episode to the second episode. I missed Lila dropping off Stan and Marcus touching the fireball. So, and, and disintegrating, I missed that the first, yeah. the first, uh, time I watched this. So when I went to subsequent rewatches of it, I, uh, I, I noticed, oh, okay, we did get that. But the thing that the, that the show does, and this will kind of go into one of my notes as well, is mm-hmm. it, it had really great dialogue in later episodes that reminded us of what happened. Cause there's a, there's a point, I think it's in, in the next episode where Diego says, Lila dropped dropped him off and said mm-hmm. he's my son. And then there's later in a later episode when Grace reveals to them, I, it's like four or five, three or somewhere in there, where Grace reveals to them that Marcus was killed by the fireball in the basement. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I thought that was I thought it was really great the way they just and and Hargreaves really gives us kind of our previously on when he's talking to Klaus in his kind of study there. He yeah. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. And says, the fact that you see, he's like, it's harder. He's just hiding too. Mm-hmm. And well, they're Klaus, keeping him drugged up too. So yeah, well, he, we well, don't know that yet. We don't know that yet, but, but uh, even still, it's like an alien. How do you drug an alien? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause we know he's an alien. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he, he tells Klaus that when he saw them in Dallas, that that prompted him to adopt different children. Yes. And there's also a moment when Hargreaves is talking to Marcus and he reminds Marcus 
Marcus is kind of saying how much of a pushover this team is going to be. And even Hargreaves is kind of saying, yeah, they're kind of a pushover. But you need to remember, they did save the world twice. Mm-hmm. So they're not all, you know, just completely weak, you know. And then, of course, Vanya has that conversation with Marcus where she tells him, reminds him, hey, I have a power. I can defeat you one on one. You know, maybe our my team can't win against your team. But one on one. Yep. She could definitely do some heavy damage. And let's talk about that orb in the basement. That was kind of foreshadowing too for the whole season, if you think about it. Yeah, and and it's hard to talk about that without moving ahead because we have we have watched the whole season, so we know what that thing yeah. is. But and it's something when you watch it for the first time and not have a clue, you're like, Oh, what's that? and oh, okay, that's weird. And yeah. Then, and then you then you know People who are comic fans or whatever should realize, and like myself, I was like, oh, I should have realized that halfway through, and I didn't realize it in about maybe five episodes in, mm-hmm. or four episodes in, going, oh, well, yeah, I should have realized that. I'm an idiot. And then, right. yeah, and then you realize, okay, that is the source of what's going on. Mm-hmm. But we also get a twist at the end of the season, which when we get to those episodes, we'll talk about. Yeah, and that's what excites me. And this is later on, but we're in the con- we're just conversating about it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to do this kind of slow rewatch because the thing is, the further the further we get along doing one episode a week, we're gonna forget those later episodes. That know, is true, you know. And so there's there's gonna be that point where we're gonna go, what was this thing again, and what was that? But you know, I yeah, I loved it because we see again. It was another one. Was, I'll say it as a blink and I missed it moment again. Was the dog disappearing? I didn't realize that because in the next episode, we're going to see the guy putting up the flyers for the missing dog. You know, mm. we see that when the little, when the pulse goes out from that fireball and goes out over the city, we see the dog disappear. Mm, very and true. It, I didn't even take note of it the first, the first couple times I watched it went, Oh, that's what's going on. You know, and so we see Marcus disintegrate and it just, yeah, it, it's, it, there was a whole lot of stuff in this episode that was setting up for the rest of the season that I'm, I'm excited to get to. Same here. One of my favorite things was the hotel that the the Umbrella mm-hmm. Academy goes to uses to recoup themselves yeah. after that battle. Uh, one uses his watch to get them two rooms. <laughs> so Luther's there and he, hot, he goes, oh, this is worth money. Okay. And I guess they got two rooms for I don't know how many days. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's what's going to be the how they're paying for anything in this. You know, yeah, they, they have must to have use a some, barter system. You know? Yeah, because, you know, out, they, they, they're at the end of the episode, they're eating all that Chinese food they got from somewhere. Yeah. You know? How would they so, get that money from? What did yeah. he hawk after that? Yeah, exactly. So, I, but yeah, and I love that Klaus knows all about this hotel. He's like, yeah, it was it was in the Roaring Twenties and the Thirties, and, and <laughs> presidents visited here and Gandhi, and then it kind of went downhill and has now become kind of just a flop house for people to party in. And we realize that's why Klaus knows about it because he usually probably went there to party. But uh, it's like there's a no questions asked, and they're you know, and the, the but the guy doesn't remember him obviously because they don't exist in this. Exactly. Episode, in this They'd, in this uh, timeline. But we don't know that yet. So again, exactly. that's getting ahead of ourselves. But yeah, I, I kind of went through all my highlights, as it were. But I'll kick, I could go into notes. But Yeah, absolutely. Let, let's, that's where I'm just jumping around here. Let, let's talk about highlights. that uh, the, the one, the, the girl with the ravens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the uh, Sparrow Academy. Yeah. Now, I got a whole crow feeling from that. Not a, the crow itself directly, because... If you remember the Crow movie, which we actually did cover, I, I did it with Lara, mm-hmm. and I, I remember the sister of the evil, you know, the the villain at that time. Her eyes get poked out. She oh, becomes blinded, okay. but she also loved crows, uh, it's like or or, or uh, ravens at that point. Oh, but the fact that big... she's using, I wonder if there was some sort of influence from the comic to create a character like that for the Umbrella Academy. Now, mind you, do I know or have I read this within the Umbrella Academy to know if this character does exist? But it would be so cool if they did that. Yeah, and I haven't. I'll be honest. I've I've been trying to stay kind of pure, at least a little bit kind of pure. I have not uh, listened to the you know the podcasts on this mm. or or done any you know deep dives into the comic books to what I don't know. I'm assuming this has a parallel storyline in the comic books. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe but, yeah, we don't know. But if you listeners are out there are comic gurus and have read the series itself and have a little information. It'd be great if you sent in that 
Well, what I'm going to listen to, I'll listen to TV podcast industries after we get done recording for episode one and see what they, what they had sure. to say about episode one. Yeah. Get they, some, they get have some information from them. They have about five episodes out, I believe, of yeah. this already. Yeah. They're, as they're a little well, ahead of us. As well as, uh, Sandman now. <laughs> Even though it just dropped today as we're recording this, uh, which is yeah. funny. But um, um, Five doesn't have a briefcase to get them out of trouble within that time, too. So we there? find out that. Yeah, I, I saw that. I, again, that was one of those things that I didn't catch in my first watch. But subsequent rewatches, I noticed that there's a briefcase. Uh, that he brings the briefcase in. And then, of course, we see Grace is in the basement with the briefcase. I don't know why she thought to grab it, but she's got it uh, down there because then Marcus comes looking for it. And it's gone. And I, at that point, now we also know Lila has a briefcase because she shows up yes. with a briefcase. And so at this point, I, I there's two briefcases that are there. And so I, I, I don't remember. I know one of those briefcases, Lila basically is going to destroy it by beating it against a park bench. And then I think she steals the other one from the Sparrow Academy or something like that. Yes. So, yes. And we uh, find out later on what's going on. Mm-hmm. But uh, within that, too, since we got Lila and we're talking about her, we find out Diego has a son with Lila, apparently, mm-hmm. called yeah, apparently. Stan. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Um, but uh, obviously, we know. We know the truth. But I, I, this is a, this is going to be a hilarious – like, this, this is one of those things that's set up for the rest of the season. This is going to be a hilarious thing to follow through oh, yeah. the rest of the season for that I'm, I'm excited to – to watch it again. You know, another one of the things that's set up here is the Sloan and Luther relationship. It's yes. set up here in this beginning, this beginnings uh, episode. So we get to see the, 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 the beginnings of that. You know, we definitely see a spark from Luther for sure. Mm. As soon, like he had a letter for sight kind of thing with her. But then I thought when she, when she was in the hallway with him and he punched her and she didn't <laughs> immediately start fighting back, I, I think there was a little bit. So there's a there's a common thing there, and I, 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 uh, I'm I excited, again, to, to watch it progress over the rest of the season. Cool. Uh, more of the humor aspect of it. I, I just love how Klaus, who, you know, Klaus just being Klaus, and then him just peeing outside of the window yeah. in the hotel room. <laughs> yeah, I had, again, that was one of those uh, things that I didn't, until I watched it just today, I was like, oh, he is peeing out the window. Okay. <laughs> I um, noticed that right away. I was like, you kidding was me? Like, <laughs> I don't care. It's raining. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, uh, let's see. Other things I've got is, oh, the cold open was over 20 minutes. We get... We get almost yeah. 21, like 21 minutes before we see. And I love how they're, they're going to do this. And there's a point where they stop doing it mm-hmm. later in the season. I don't remember exactly when, but we, we see both an umbrella and a sparrow in the opening. Yes. The, the opening, uh, after the cold open, when they bring up the umbrella academy title card. And remember that was a thing last season that we found out afterwards was that they were subtly inserting sparrows all throughout the season in different places, sometimes in that title card, sometimes throughout the, the, the episodes and stuff and, and, uh, just kind of foreshadowing the Sparrow Academy coming Correct. up. So it, it's, it was cool to kind of see those title cards come back again. Cause it, we've always, I always like pointing out those title cards when I call strange indeed about them. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's move into quotes. I only have a couple, but okay. I've got, a, I've got a few. Uh, uh, the first one I've got I already alluded to was that Luther after the fight. When Allison says, you all right? And he says, I don't know yet. I've just never had my ass handed to me like that before. It's like, here you go. It's your ass. (laughs) (laughs) I just just was rolling when I listened to that every time. Here you go. (laughs) Here's your ass. (laughs) Uh, One of mine was from when they were actually eating the Chinese food because Klaus is just annoyed with everything. He goes, he goes, well, there's something that I just don't like. Brothers that don't eat like barn animals, <laughs> oh, or, or I like, uh, and then he, he, then we see Luther and Diego with noodles hanging from their mouths like yeah. cows with like exactly. wheat. <laughs> it was done well. The next one I've got is, is from Klaus, and it's when when uh, Vanya is talking to Hargreaves and and uh, re- kind of repeating back what she says, and and uh, he says, "No, no, no, we're amateur idiots at best." That's after Vanya says, <laughs> "We're we're all the things he just said, except we're perfidious. We're not perfidious." <laughs> yeah, Klaus, gotta love him. So this one's from Five, and he goes, "If you ever see your doppelganger," and Klaus goes, "You sleep with them," and Luther looks in disgust, and Klaus says, "Oh, come on." You wouldn't climb Luther Mountain? 
<laughs> yeah, I think Diego says kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. um, so um, the the next one I've got is uh, is from Hargreaves when he meets Klaus in the study, and he says, "Which one are you, Scruffy, Fatty, Sad Girl? I forget the rest." <laughs> Scruffy, bad, uh, sad girl. <laughs> one I have, the last one I have would be uh, Diego, and this is Talila, and he goes, "Is this a joke?" And that's Talila about Stan being his son, and Lila goes, "That your boys can swim fast." <laughs> yeah, and, I, <laughs> and he goes, "I've had." St-, she goes, "I have Stan for twelve years. It's time to do your part. Have fun bonding. Be good for mommy." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just like okay, this is a little awkward and weird. <laughs> yeah, and especially knowing how it's going to end up, what it's going to end up being, that is, is makes it even more funny when you actually see the scene. Like I said, I missed it the first time. So, <laughs> um, the the last one I've got is is when uh, Jamie asks Five if he's the Umbrella Academy's mascot, and he says no, more like their ringer, and he punches her. But then, of course, she still gets the better of him. But yeah. All right. Well, uh, that was pretty much our coverage of this particular episode. It kind of went quick, but maybe that's because we watched this two or three times, you know. But overall, a really good episode. Definitely to reintroduce us back into the Umbrella Academy. I had fun watching it again. Uh, I'll probably watch it again before I watch episode two, just to flow back into the swing of things. It was a fun episode, you know, and there's there's even things we didn't talk about. We didn't Gosh, just more you know, five completely always monologuing about time and what's yes. going on with time is is just callback from earlier seasons. We've had that before, and you know Diego talking about your job was so hard or well, exactly because he was you know. there. Yep. Um, so yeah, it's it's great. And I, I can't wait to see to pick up the little things that I missed in the the first time binging through it. So yeah, um, looking right now. I, I don't see any feedback whatsoever on Facebook or uh, I know email. I saw one comment from Laura that she was just excited to hear our thoughts on the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I didn't I didn't copy and paste it because it was. But thank you, Laura. We're we're excited to talk about the Umbrella Academy. Exactly. So nothing on uh, YouTube as well as far as feedback or anything nothing like that. Nothing on Instagram. Yeah. Let's check that. So. Yeah. As far as, like, uh, news in the comic world that's there, San Diego Comic-Con came out. So, a comic came and passed. Uh, we've seen a few trailers that look really cool. If you watch the panels, you can actually see them on YouTube itself. Obviously, certain ones you can't see the trailers because they were only there for people who attended the actual con itself. But I look forward to uh, more. The Wakanda Forever one looks great. There was a Guardians of the Galaxy one, but we haven't seen it yet. Mm -hmm. Same thing with uh, Ant-Man and Quantumania. Apparently, there's a reveal in there, so so we're going to get some uh, cool things coming our way within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And, of course, Black Adam, which I look forward to as well. So The Rock made a cool introduction there. Thought that was amazing. Got to watch that. And, of course, the one and only Kevin Smith himself was there, and he uh, gave people a little treat there for Clerks 3, which will be coming out on, uh, I think, towards the end of September, going into October. But he's going to be touring that movie as well, just to plug Kevin a little bit. But he did great, and he had a great time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that movie. Clerks is one of my favorite, one of my those uh, favorite movies I love to, to reference, and Clerks 2 is good. <laughs> And to keep you guys posted, too, yeah, uh, Rob, Moda, and myself went to Terrificon at Mohegan Sun in uh, Connecticut this you know, past weekend. We got to meet a few people. We talked to Tim Daly, bumped into Joey Pantaleone. Uh, we, uh, I saw a f- couple of people from the Orville. Uh, Adrian Pilecki was there, and she saw my panels, the Pixel shirt, and gave me, gave me a comment and liked it. Nice. So, so that was pretty cool. Uh, I got to speak to Tim a little bit, so we might have something in the future that we could have for you guys. Because uh, not only did you know was Tim in Wings and movies and Madam Secretary, but he also voiced Superman at one point as well. So he was the voice of Superman in the animated series. So uh, I'm looking forward to see if I could get you know Tim on. So uh, we kind of walked the grounds. I spoke to Jerry Ordway. And a couple of the other artists that were there, our friend Kirk Manley, and uh, got to peruse it. Uh, 
pretty much just to enjoy it. So Rob and I are going to do a whole uh, review based upon our uh, experience there. We only went for one day. I went for one day. Rob went the second day because he was looking for hookups and comics. <laughs> so, yeah. but uh, yeah, we'll we'll talk about that. You'll get that on the next episode. So check that out when that, that actually comes out. We'll let you guys know. So uh, for podcast recommendations. I just want to say a big thank you to all of our, our, our podcast friends out there, TV Podcast Industry, Strange Indeed, Run For Your Lives, uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, and House Podcastica. I think I got shout outs uh, and love from all those podcasts over the last <laughs> last couple of months uh, as I've been traveling and, and, and sometimes I've been able to send feedback. I think uh, even Strange Indeed, one of their listeners sent in feedback saying how much they appreciate uh, my live Steve's. So I, uh, I just want to, I just want to put that out there in the world. Thank you so much for that love. That we, it's it's amazing to me the 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 network that we've created here, the friends that we have that uh, that we have a chance to to hear our voices and their voices and join with them uh, during this this time. And uh, so I just I just uh, thank you, thank you all. Awesome, cool. Uh, I would like to uh, recommend Wilhelm because I just got to listen to Ben and his friend, and they covered all the uh, best sequels that were out there nice so i thought that was a pretty cool uh episode i really enjoyed that one and i kind of like i think i was in par with what they had too uh except for like one or two that you know ben was just talk going on and on about uh what was it the fast and furious <laughs> oh yeah See, i wish I, I didn't i haven't had a chance to listen to that one yet but i definitely want to catch up and i want to see you know i'm sure terminator 2 judgment day is is on their list. Of, yeah, of superior sequels from the aliens. Of, yeah. Aliens may may be on there because even though it's, a, I I look at Alien and Aliens as almost not two different movies, but not really sequels. But because Aliens is more of an action movie, yes, really than a horror movie, and Alien mm -hmm. is more of a horror movie. So it may. So if you like action movies better, then you that, might prefer Aliens. Exactly. Um, well, uh, if you guys want, you could actually hear me cover those. Uh, we covered Alien and Aliens on uh, Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, so you can hear our coverage there. And we, uh, Wendy and I did Alien, and then I believe uh, Kelly and I and Wendy did Aliens to get all three of us together, and that was nice. fun to do. But yeah, we did kind of make those mentions how like Alien was more of like a horror suspense thriller through uh, what we got out of there. And then with Aliens, it was more action adventure, yeah, like kind of military esque, which yeah. is fun. It's it's the same series but different storylines or story paths, mm -hmm. and we enjoyed them. Yeah. Uh, to recommend something else, uh, Steve's already mentioned TV podcast industries. Currently, they're still wrapping up their stuff with uh, the Umbrella Academy, but they're also diving in, and I mentioned it with Sandman. So I will be doing Sandman cast on House Podcastica on the Podcastica network. So you could hear Jamie Dimmick and I cover the new Sandman series that just dropped today on Friday the 5th of August. So uh, we will be start, we start recording on Monday. I'm hoping to get that out and bang that out. I'm still working on music for intro and outro because... I wanted to do something weird and strange. So, plus, nice. I might have to give a shot at trying to do music for panels when I get a chance, as well as I adrenaline, like because it's really a rights issues, and I don't really want to step on people's toes with music. So, this is going to be my first foray into actually writing and recording my own music. Which I haven't done in such a long time. So I'm going to do that for uh, Sandman Cast, and that's going to start it. So you could check us out, Sandman Cast, on the House Podcastica podcast. And uh, check out the Facebook page, too. That's there. Yes, so that Jason, did, Jason did mention you all on uh, uh, the Better Call Saul podcast this week is, is going to be doing that. So, yep. All right. Well, uh, we talked about feedback before, but we want to talk to you and how you could submit your feedback. Well, obviously, you're listening to us on your podcast player of choice. If that if that player would allow you to give us a shout out or a review, we would love to have that or a rating. We would love to be able to pass that on and uh, and say thank you to you for that. So whether it's Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts, uh, check us out there. 
Check out our website, panels2pixelspodcast.com. We are also on Facebook at facebook.com slash panels2pixels. We also are on Twitter at panels2pixels, and that's panels and the number two, pixels. We have an email address that you can send us a voicemail, a voice message, or just a straight up written email. That's panels2pixels1 at gmail.com. That's panels2pixels1. The TO is spelled out right in the middle, and then the number one at gmail.com. Awesome. And like like Steve was saying, you could actually record your voice and send it as an attachment. We'll pop it right into the podcast as we record. So it doesn't necessarily have to pertain to the one that we're covering that week, but if you have something that you want to say about a previous episode, send it anyway. We'll still play it and talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, you can find us on YouTube. All you have to do is search Panels to Pixels Podcast and... It's Panels to Pixels podcast, not Panels to Pixels. So uh, if you're there and you like what we do, literally it's the podcast recorded with a visual on top. And uh, if you like to listen to it that way, that's fine. But uh, there will be some videos there if we do interviews. So there will actually be video stuff is there as well. Subscribe and give us a thumbs up if you like what we're doing. Very, very cool. We are also on Instagram at Panels 2 Pixels Podcast. That's Panels 2 Pixels Podcast, all spelled out in letters. Awesome. And check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Network. We highly recommend them all. I already mentioned Wilhelm with Ben Beck, The Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and check out everybody and their links there. Well, coming up for us here on Panels to Pixels, of course, we will continue our coverage through the Umbrella Academy. And whenever She-Hulk starts, we will be also podcasting simultaneously. Simul yeah, that's, that's a hard word to say. Simultaneously? <laughs> on as She-Hulk as well. So once that gets started, uh, look forward to hearing our voices on uh, Umbrella Academy and on She-Hulk. Yes, it's fun. I look forward to that one. That's I've yeah. been looking at more and more stuff, and I'm like, I, I'm anticipating it more. I love Tatiana Maslany. She's so good. I can't wait to see her in this role. Same here. Uh, well, where can listeners hear us other than here? Well, I've already mentioned it, but I was I send voice messages to various other podcasts that our friends do, and they they uh, graciously play those play those on their their feedback sections. I was recently on an episode of Adrenaline Cinema podcast with Mark uh, covering the movie Predator. That'll be out <laughs> at some point. Uh, yes, no big. I did watch uh, the movie Prey today with Amber Mid Thunder, which is a prequel yep. to the Predator. Uh, lineage or, or it went excellent, excellent movie. I, I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to uh, watch it again and uh, podcast on that one. Awesome. And like Steve said, uh, he was on Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. That's my other podcast that can be found on the Pirate Car Entertainment Network. Uh, coming up, that will be out probably within the next few days, will be Escape from the Planet of the Apes with Jerry and myself. I'm hoping within a week I could get the Predator or Predator 1987 that Steve and I had did cover, so that way we could jump right into, because Prey's been out for a few days now. And oh, today. I today. It dropped today. It? I already, well, I saw it the other day. Oh, maybe it dropped, maybe it dropped Wednesday. Maybe it was Wednesday that it dropped, but. Yeah, I started watching it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, since it came out, I we want to cover that, too, so that way we're uh, up to snuff with it, with all the new Absolutely. stuff that's coming out there, you know? So uh, check out uh, Journal and Cinema Podcast and the Pyrocore Entertainment Network. Check me out there. Um, well, that basically covers this particular podcast. Same podcast, different panel, different pixel. I'm Mark. I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels Podcast, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.